Back in 2014, a woman was hiking out in the mountains of Placerville, Colorado. Now, she's having a great time until she realized she's being tracked by a mountain lion. Now, the cougar stalked her for about 20 minutes, often pouncing out in front of her on the trail. And she had tried different tactics like brandishing a big branch to make herself look larger, but nothing was working. But she also remembered she was an amateur opera singer. And so she started singing opera really loudly. And the cougar started to back away and it unsettled the feline long enough for the hiker to retreat to safety. Now, in and of itself, that's a pretty funny story, but I guarantee you that she was anxious, worried, and afraid. And her fear engaged the stress response, the fight or flight response. Stress hormones were released into her bloodstream and triggered the body to in increase her breathing, increase her heart rate, and prepare the body for injury. And that started diverting resources from the to the big muscles of her arms and legs to prepare for an immediate fight or for a rapid escape, as it should. Her body and mind reacted exactly in a way that it should have, and it worked perfectly. In fact, it's probably more appropriate to call this process the muscle priming response rather than the stress or anxiety response. However, this muscle priming is less than helpful for dealing with the many challenges of life, such as managing your money or dealing with conflict at home or aging parents or long lines at the supermarket or, you know, the phone at work that won't stop ringing. If you're feeling anxious, fearful, worried, and stressed just during an average day dealing with average issues, then life can be a real struggle. And if you're constantly worried about past or present difficulties or about things that might go wrong in the future, then just like the hiker being stalked by the mountain lion, you're probably engaging the stress response, sending a biochemical soup of adrenaline, cortisol, and other stress hormones throughout your bloodstream in order to, to steep your muscles and organs in this fight-or-flight chemical response, which is not what it's meant for. It's like you're driving a car in first gear down the highway. It, it might actually get you to where you want to go, but you're destroying your car's engine. So if it feels like your mind is constantly whirling or the tiniest mishaps set you off worrying, if you have feelings of, of impending doom or shortness of breath or increased heart rate or muscle tension, headaches, irritability, insomnia, if you get sick often, uh, it may be due to a depleted immune system or you have a, a constant nervous stomach, then you may be dealing with with the physical effects of chronic stress, tension, and anxiety. And you might know on a rational level that you're blowing things out of proportion, but on an emotional level, the experience of panic and dread can still be overwhelming as a stress response pulls power and energy from your logical prefrontal cortex and sends it back into the emotional limbic system. That why, that's why people can't think clearly when they're stressed or angry and lash out or send that text to their boss because they're not thinking clearly. The subconscious mind works through automation. So the beating of your heart, breathing, running your immune system, walking, riding a bike, navigating a spoon to your mouth, or driving a car, these are all examples of automatic habits. So these are things that the conscious mind doesn't have to think about doing anymore. They are habits because you practice them over and over again with the conscious mind until they became a natural part of your physiology. However, thoughts and emotions can also become automatic habits when practiced over and over again. So let's go back to, to chronic stress, fear, worry, and anxiety. If that's what you're practicing over and over again, then that's becoming an automatic subconscious habit. And practice doesn't make perfect, it makes permanent. And what you make permanent becomes your subconscious programming. Now, can hypnotherapy help deal with stress, fear, worry, and anxiety? Yes, hypnotherapy is an excellent method for calming down inappropriate stress and the feelings of worry, anger, and anxiety because the natural process of hypnosis is just deep relaxation. And from that state of natural deep relaxation, you can retrain your brain and body. You can reprogram your subconscious mind to feel calmer in the situations that would have once caused you to worry and feel anxious. So let me give you one study uh, that was published in the Journal of Consulting and Clinical Psychology. And this study is about how hypnosis and related visualization techniques were shown to actually prevent the weakening of the immune response that often follows periods of acute stress, something we really need to be dealing with right now. 
So in this study, medical and dental students were about to take exams and under tremendous amounts of stress. Now, one group just went through that stressful uh, period as, as they would. Another group was taught self-hypnosis, so doing hypnotherapy on themselves after going through some training. So the one group, uh, subjects who did not use self-hypnosis prior to the stressful event, they showed a 24% decrease in T-cell count. Now, T-cells are very important. Those are the cells that go after cancer cells, that go after viruses, that go after bacteria. So these healthy students who, you know, maybe they're 26, 27, 28 years old, uh, healthy students, just going through stressful uh, exam time at school, they showed a 24% decrease in T-cell count. Now, the students who learned how to do self-hypnosis and practiced that on a regular basis, even daily basis, they showed an increase of 2%. Now, this is huge because not only did they just not stay level, they did not decrease like the stressed out students who didn't do anything to help their situation. They increased by 2%. And what the investigators found is that uh, the self-hypnosis students exhibited stronger immune response. Uh, they, they continued to increase their immune system response the more they practiced. So what is hypnotherapy? What is hypnosis? Hypnosis is just a natural state of deep relaxation, not unlike meditation or if you do yoga, savasana at the end of a yoga class. Hypnosis is simply a state of peaceful awareness, sometimes called a trance, that's achieved through guided relaxation. Another way to define hypnosis is that it's simply a state of relaxed focus. So hypnotherapy is a clinical use of hypnosis with using hypnosis for therapeutic benefits. By using guided therapeutic relaxation, hypnotherapy utilizes the natural trance state to create change in a person's life. So hypnotherapy activates your natural healing process, the, the placebo effect. It mobilizes the subconscious mind to do the healing. Hypnotherapy doesn't do the healing. It's a technique, a, a tool that activates your own natural healing potential, the placebo effect. It taps into that process. Hypnotherapy teaches a person to relax the mind and body to the point where you can tap into the body's healing response and change their way of being, just like those medical and dental students. Now, this methodology then illuminates possible patterns of negative or limiting beliefs in your subconscious mind that may be blocking you from health joy, success, and abundance in your daily life, and then uses certain processes to heal those limiting beliefs or amending those limiting beliefs or, or editing them. And because you're in this heightened state of awareness during this deep relaxation, hypnosis can help you reach your goals, heal past traumas, accelerate healing, control pain, and achieve success in many areas of your life. Another way to define this to find this evidence-based uh, modality is that hypnosis is simply a natural state of relaxed focus. Now, we all experience this natural trance state several times a day, whether daydreaming or road hypnosis while driving, watching TV, or the peaceful dreamy feeling we experience as we drift out and uh, into sleep. And by natural, I mean that everyone has the capability to enter this relaxed state of awareness called hypnosis. And by using guided therapeutic relaxation, hypnotherapy utilizes this natural trance state to create change and healing in a person's life. Hypnotherapy activates your natural healing process and mobilizes the subconscious mind, the auto, uh, autonomic nervous system, to do the healing. And hypnotherapy doesn't in and of itself do the healing. I, I don't do the healing. I don't fix you as a hypnotherapist. It's a technique that activates your own healing potential. So I, I want to end this video with my favorite pro, quote regarding hypnotherapy. It's from Dr. Uh, Deirdre Barrett, who's a uh, psychologist and a faculty member at Harvard Medical School. And she says, I found that many complaints, smoking, overeating, test anxiety, public speaking phobia, and chronic physical pain 
responded more dramatically to hypnosis than to any other form of psychotherapy I was using. That's a pretty powerful quote. So whether you're trying to overcome an old problem, habit or behavior, or simply want to grow to a, a, a new level of personal achievement or increase your health and well-being, hypnotherapy can very possibly help when all else has failed. So if you have any questions regarding hypnotherapy, please send me an email or give me a call, and I'd be happy to talk with you. If you're, if you're ready for change, just, just please call me, and I'll gladly talk to you about hypnotherapy and how it can help you attain your goals, reach your full potential, and achieve the life that you've desired. So thank you so much for watching.